So it's taken me a few days to finally get on the ball and talk about the three-way trade between Nashville, Colorado, and Ottawa. Reason for that is, as most of you may know, when it comes to trades, I have a very hard time declaring a winner. Especially when it's within, you know, two days, three days, two years even. It often takes me a very long time to even want to start to say, this team won the trade. No, this team won the trade. And the fact is, and I was trying to not talk with my hands, but I'm sorry, I have to live up to the Italian stereotype. I, I can't honestly still, even in this instance, declare a winner, even though you can kind of say whether or not it was a good trade for certain teams at this point in time. This is another textbook trade or set of trades where it's very obvious we are not going to know the winner or winners for a very long time. So because of that, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to sit here and jump around all over the place with jump cuts. But because of that, what I'm going to do in this uh, video here, in this I was almost going to say episode, it's habit, I'm sorry. What I'm going to do in this video, though, is we're going to take a look at the three teams, what they acquired, and what it means for them. Now, the story with Ottawa is well known. They didn't want to pay him partly due to their internal cap, where, of course, they don't actually pay up to the cap. They kind of stick right around uh, that lower mark. And it's a little bit understandable as to why they didn't want to pay him. Although hero charts aren't the end-all be-all, if you use a hero chart as a basis for how good a player might be, Turris has been used as a number one center in Ottawa, but the stats don't exactly measure up to him being a true number one center. Not that they necessarily do for Matt Duchesne either, but we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. For Turris, his skill set's well-known, fast player, good with the puck, but over the past few seasons, his primary points per hour and his shot impact per hour have been declining. He's a little bit weak defensively as well. So like I said, it's understandable as to why Ottawa wouldn't exactly want to pay him, say, 6x6 six six, like he just got in Nashville, 6 million over the next six years. The closest comparables to that, some of the likes of Brendan Dubinsky, Ryan Kessler, or perhaps the most accurate comparison is Brian Little, although... You could argue, at least just going by the hero chart, that Brian Little might be a little bit better. I know, Jets fans, shocking, right? Somebody's actually giving Brian Little just a little bit of credit. Who would have thought? But the bottom line is, for Nashville and for Kyle Turris, this is a great move. You look at the center depth now for the Preds with Johansson, Turris, and now Nick Menino. You factor in that I believe it's been Colton Sisons on the second line as of late. You still have Yarn Croak and Frederick Goodrow, who could play center. It's a good situation for the Preds, who are still looking to be in win-now mode. Not that the Sens aren't looking to be in that same spot, which is, you know, why I think they were a little bit more willing to only get back Matt Duchesne in this deal. Not to say again that, oh, it's only Matt Duchesne as if he isn't good enough. I think you get the point. I'm going to stop rambling. And again, I'm not going to throw the term win around for Nashville, but a big reason as to why this is a good trade for the Predators is the fact that they didn't have to give up Matthias Ekholm, they gave up Samuel Girard instead. And while Girard does project to be a very solid NHL defenseman, as we'll talk about in a bit, keeping Ekholm keeps the Preds in win-now mode. So all around, very good deal for the Preds, as again, they look to stay in cup contention. For the Ottawa Senators, they acquire Matt Duchesne, and you might be surprised that this is actually the aspect of this three-team trade that I have really the least to say about. Aside from reiterating the fact that it absolutely sucks to see someone have to leave their favorite childhood club in this manner, I don't have that much to say. You can look at how similar of a player he is to Turris when it comes to speed and ability with the puck, how he, how Duchesne might be a little bit better defensively and a little bit more of a physical player. You can talk about the fact that Duchesne's getting paid $6 million over the next two years and how the Sens view him as more worth that money than what they were willing to offer Kyle Turris. But this entire deal, it's just a wait and see kind of trade. We'll see what happens with Matt Duchesne. Is he good enough? Is the top two of Duchesne and Broussard that much better than Turris and Broussard? Now, obviously, if you're a regular on my channel and if you watch the franchise mode videos, you're not going to be surprised to know that the team I'm most excited for here is the Colorado Avalanche. While I'm certainly not going to declare this a king's ransom, Joe Sackick does deserve a little bit of credit 
for this return. Now, while you can argue that he should have been able to smooth things over with Matt Duchesne and not have this be an issue in the first place, to get this much back for a player that every team in the league knew that you wanted to get rid of in the first place requires a little bit of skill and a little bit of, you know, actual talent in his role, which, I mean, no one would ever take a shot at Joe Sackick for not being an amazing Hall of Fame caliber player on the ice, but he kind of replaced Garth Snow as the punching bag, as the joke of the league when it came to general managers. Say what you want about whether or not Joe Sackick should have taken a different deal. It's an interesting haul one way or another, and we're going to look at each piece individually. Starting off with Shane Bowers, who seems like a sure thing to make the NHL at some point down the line, the 20th overall pick from this past June. He's committed to Boston University, and I could sit here and, you know, try to explain his play, but let's just make this easy. Link is in the description to a scouting report done by the Hockey News over this past year. Bottom line is, he's a good pickup. And within that Colorado system, what could you label him at, you know, at this current point in time? Is he a top five prospect on that team? Is he a top three prospect on that team? At the very least, you can flat out consider him just another first round pick that's come over from the Ottawa Senators on top of what they just acquired. So one way or another, it's a very good return, whether or not he does become a top six center or even a bottom six player, as some other scouts have projected. Andrew Hammond might be the most interesting piece of this deal. And to me, this just screams Joe Sackick doing the Ottawa Senators a favor. I talked about the internal cap that the Sens have. And needless to say, getting rid of Andrew Hammond's $1.35 million contract, even though it expires at the end of the year, that certainly helps out. And the bottom line is, with the signing of Mike Condon and Danny Taylor, who came over from the KHL, you have Marcus Hogberg still in that system. Mike Condon is the backup long-term, if not the future starter, whenever Craig Anderson goes. There was no spot for Andrew Hammond at this point. And it is hard to believe that his magical run was already as long ago as it was the 2014-15 season. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just me, but it seems like that was a very, very long time ago. And the bottom line is, last year he was a disaster at both the NHL and the AHL levels. This year in seven games at the Belleville Sens, he has looked better. But obviously with this deal, he's a very inconsequential piece. But it does get Colorado some organizational goalie depth, I suppose, for the rest of the year. Of course, with them you know, having injury trouble already with Jonathan Bernier, it could be quite helpful. Now, the reason why I didn't definitively say that Shane Powers is a top three or top five prospect within Colorado's system at this point is simply because of Samuel Girard. It depends on where you want to rank him first. Again, link is in the description to a scouting report. I could sit here and talk about, oh, he's a great skater. He's a great offensive D-man. But I would just be reiterating what others have already said. So feel free to go check out that scouting report in the description. But the bottom line is the 2016 second round pick is another very solid pickup for the abs, period. Our last prospect and the oldest prospect of the bunch, Bowers is 18, Gerard is 19. We have 21-year-old Vladislav Kamenev. He is the final player involved. Another former second round pick. He had 51 points in 70 games last season in the AHL. Scouting report is, of course, listed below. But he's been described in a very similar way to how Shane Bowers was described heading in to the draft this past June. Fast skater, good with the puck, not afraid to play the body, and viewed as a potential top six player moving forward. So that's three prospects, all viewed as great skaters who should make an impact at the NHL level in some form or another in the future. Mr. Sackick, if I could, I would tip my cap to you, sir. That is a very solid return. But on top of those three prospects, you also get the three picks back in return. Now, the Ottawa Senators, of course, are expected to be a playoff team. But even then, think back to this past June, towards the middle and end of the first round and the players that were taken, whether it is Yusuf Valamaki, Erho Vakaninen, Josh Norris, Kyler Yamamoto, Ryan Paling, Shane Bowers himself. Needless to say, it won't be too bad of an addition to get another player of that caliber. And that's not even considering that people expect this draft to be the best of the past decade. And I'm sure as we get closer to the draft, 
some people are going to be trying to, you know, label it as the best draft since 2003. So this is a very good draft to have a ton of picks in. Look at what the Vegas Golden Knights are doing as an example as they continue to stock up. A little bit different of a situation, but again, a very solid return for Colorado. And this might be me praising Nashville's scouting system more than anything, but you get that second round pick from Nashville, think of what the Preds have been able to do with second round picks, including Samuel Girard and Vladislav Kamenev themselves. So guys, that will do it for this one. I hope you did enjoy, of course, a little bit of a different style here lately going on the channel, but hey, we're trying new things around here, right? Let me know though, down in the comments below, if you think that you can fairly say one team managed to win this trade. But for me, all three teams are looking pretty good coming out of this deal. I'm certainly excited to see what Matt Duchesne can do in Ottawa. I'm hoping he's not that great, obviously, because now he gets to play the Bruins a bit more regularly, which scares the hell out of me. But again, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this trade. And if you're a fan of any of the three teams, are you happy with how this trade has worked out? Again, links are in the description to those scouting reports that I talked about. There's also the links to my Twitter and Twitch. Give me a follow on there if you haven't already. Leave a like on the video, man, if you haven't already. Why wouldn't you want to help out this gorgeous face right here on YouTube? <laughs> Subscribe as well if you haven't already for more tremendous content. I can't say that with a straight face, but damn it, I try. And that has to count for something, right? I hope. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.